Hi everybody and hi after a very long time. Uh, I apologize for such a long delay but uh, such has been uh, so much uh, business at work and at home that uh, I have not been able to get back to you guys. So here we are uh, with a new lecture and uh, I will be making it more structured, more regular and I will be also introducing some uh, team sessions, some training sessions that we can schedule which more focus on uh, very interesting topics uh, but for today uh, our topic is uh, modulation and coding schemes uh, modulation and coding schemes uh, or in general known as the MCS uh, play a very important role in the throughput uh, or the data rate that is experienced by the user and Often uh, in our day-to-day -day, uh, work, uh, we refer to is uh, that the UA should have good modulation, uh, MCS, uh, good MCS schemes uh, to have good throughput. Uh, but a question that uh, I wanted to uh, emphasize on how how MCS actually helps uh, the UE to have a good throughput and how the higher order modulation schemes actually help to get more data. To the user using the same uh, physical resources so one thing uh, the first thing that I want to make you clear is that when we talk about a user <coughs> or a UE using more uh, uh, higher modulation scheme then it does not mean that it has more physical resources in terms of the E node B or the G node B attached to it so the concept is a UE having the same physical resources with higher modulation scheme will have higher data rate and with a lower modulation scheme will have a lower data rate. So the first question is modulation. In LTE uh, we had uh, QPSK and uh, we had QAM and for QAM we have 16 and 64 and for, Q for QPSK uh, 4 is basically the number of symbols that you can actually <coughs> transmit and then when we come to NR we have these two we have this as well and we have the 256 quadrature amplitude <coughs> modulation now one thing I want to make you clear is that I'm talking about downlink right now so these modulation schemes for LTE and NR are in the downlink so what is the difference? What is the difference between uh, 16 quadrature amplitude modulation or QPSK or 64 quadrature amplitude modulation or 256? And how going higher in the modulation scheme, we have more data sent to the user. So the concept is, if you consider your uh, quadrants uh, like if you have uh, basic backgrounds in, in mathematics so this is your quadrant this is your x-axis for example and this is your y so in your 16 quadrature amplitude modulation you will have four symbols in this one so for example you have a here 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 okay and you no know, four bits uh, like for for example if you're explaining 16 coordinated amplitude modulation so here's a combination for example 0 0 0 0 for example you have 0 0 I'm not uh, writing the correct bits here but you can have like this the bits are not correct here so the concept is that all of these 16 symbols can be represented in terms of the amplitude. So this is the amplitude of this point and then the phase. So we have in 16 quadrature amplitude 16 symbols that can be represented in this quadrant by the symbols amplitude and the phase. 
now in 64 these four points will become eight points so we have uh, basically uh, actually 16 here so 16 16 16 and 16 and you imagine that when we go to 256 these will further increase and what's the concept here the concept is that the distance between these two points will start to reduce and when the distance starts to reduce so comes the probability of error so if your SINR is low then the probability of error for the receiver to decode these two symbols which are very close to each other will increase so basically if you have good SINR then your probability of error will reduce in decoding a higher modulation scheme and that's how the scheduler in LTE or the scheduler in NR works that at is as it sees that the UE is experiencing higher SINR so it has the outer loop of blur that is your block error rate and it will determine that this UE can decode higher modulation scheme with a less probability of error and therefore it will give that UE the higher modulation scheme as you can see now four symbols can be transmitted these four symbols are in 16 qualm. When you go to 64, this becomes eight symbols. And when you go to 256, this becomes 16. So this is the concept that you need to understand in terms of your quadrature amplitude modulation, that higher the modulation, higher is the probability of error. And why is that higher probability of error? Because of the symbols getting closer to each other. And therefore, you need higher SINR to have lower probability of error and your UE can be assigned those modulation schemes. And this is a direct consequence of your uh, signal quality towards the user. There is no other uh, factor that will determine it. And the CQI, the channel quality indicator that your UE sends back to the E node B will decide uh, the modulation scheme that the UE gets. So this was about modulation. The second part is coding. So remember about coding, it's related to error. So <clears throat> when we talk about this coding, this coding is actually the random bits that you add in to your data stream to avoid, uh, uh, to enable error detection. The more uh, better quality of the channel, the less bits need to be added in your uh, uh, data stream to avoid errors and to enable error detection. So for example, uh, some of the error coding schemes have a one by third of the data that is being transmitted is actually your coding, coding bits. So, so like one by third is your coding bits and rest of two by third is your actual data. So this ratio of the coding bits added into your actual data bits will reduce if you have good channel conditions. And by good channel conditions, you mean that you have good SANR, good RSRP, and the probability of error is less. So that is how the two things are working in parallel. So if you have a lower coding scheme, you have more uh, data and less coding bits. So basically you get more data throughput. If you have a high modulation scheme, you get more amount of data transmitted in one modulation symbol. Again, you have higher data. So these two things combine to form your MCS, that is your modulation and coding schemes uh, structure in LTE and NR, and that is our third point. So in LTE, we have around 15 MCS coding schemes, which your uh, E node B will actually decide about your uh, UE uh, as per the scheduling algorithm. And in NR, we have around uh, 30, 31 or 33 uh, coding schemes, depending on the code rate, and the modulation scheme. Uh, one thing uh, different about NR from LTE is that LTE had a max of 64 qualm and NR has 256 qualm as well in downlink and in uplink as well. 
and the coding schemes are according to that. Uh, in terms of strategy, uh, we probably uh, have a very simple strategy in terms of uh, the coding schemes because usually uh, we don't disturb these uh, parameters as per the scheduler. So the scheduler will decide as per his own algorithm when to switch or up or when to switch down. But in terms of network problems, you can detect uh, if you are on a drive test. So if you see that your blood is uh, very high and uh, your throughput is not uh, that much, even if you're are being allocated a lot of resource blocks. So a common problem that can occur is that, for example, uh, you have a low uh, PR visualization uh, in your site. Uh, even then, your UEs are not getting the required throughput. So you need to check what kind of MCS they are uh, on, what kind of MCS is being allocated, and then you troubleshoot from there that why your UE is not getting a good uh, CQI. It can be an on-field issue, like for example, the SINR is just not good on ground, or it can be your uh, equipment issue uh, causing low, uh, very high blur, and then causing your uh, E-Node B actually to reduce uh, the coding scheme to avoid any errors. So this was uh, all about uh, modulation and coding schemes. Uh, I hope uh, you would have learned something from it and I will uh, ask you to subscribe the channel. We will be posting lots of videos now and we will be arranging uh, some team session as well for a uh, focus training. Uh, stay tuned to the channel and stay um, uh, keep listening you will be hearing from me again thank you so much and see you next time